So China needs to rebalance its economy after the global financial crisis. As you know, uh, according to the newly published the data, China's GDP now reached, last year reached 7.5 trillion US dollars. The definitely number two in the world. But uh, we still have a long way to go because we have 1.4 billion people. Any data multiplied by 1.4 billion is huge. <laughs> Any data divided by 1.4 billion is nothing. So our GDP per capita is below to 100 other countries. And first, I'm going to talk about saving versus consumption. Uh, as you know, China has a very high saving rate. Uh, I can show you the data here. You can see China's uh, the, the, the upper one is the, in the year uh, 1996. The lower one is uh, 2007. You can see China's saving rate is much higher than the developed countries. And uh, generally speaking, the uh, Asian countries has a higher saving rate, national saving rate, than the uh, developing countries. And uh, if, if you talk about a percentage of consumption, investment, and the net export in China's GDP, you can see that there is a, a difference. <coughs> and why China has such a high saving rate? Certainly, one is the culture. Chinese people has the 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 ideology of saving saving money. Uh, I always teach in my American friends. I said you guys always borrow tomorrow's money for today, and then we save we Chinese save today's money for tomorrow. That's why you got the financial crisis. <laughs> <laughs> That's kidding. But actually, it's a. a, a, a the cultural difference, and the second is tradition. You know, the, um, in the in the United States, the parents' uh, responsibility to their children is mainly uh, below, before they graduated from the universities. After they graduated from the universities, just uh, nothing. But in China, even when the children graduated from the universities, the parents still need to take care of them, uh, of their marriage, of their housing, and so on. So the Chinese people need to save more money for their children. So that's the tradition. And the third certainly is the self-protection, uh, uh, because our social security system is not so good. So the people need to save some money for their self-protection. And the fourth is because the development state we are developing. So we need more and more investment. Uh, according to the theory of uh, development, uh, we are on the uh, stage of uh, after taking off. So in this case, investment is a must. So we need to absorb more money from the saving to use for investment. Certainly, this high saving rate has negative effects. One is oversupply of money. Uh, in, this, in, uh, in this case, it will cause the danger of inflation and also will uh, cause a bubble of, uh, of financial assets. And also, it will uh, get the uh, investment overheat because uh, we want to have a higher growth rate, so we uh, we have a higher saving rate, so we can put more money to investment. So that it costs the investment overheat, and this will cost the excess capacity, the high foreign trade surplus, and the high foreign exchange reserve. So low saving rate and high consumption rate in the United States drove 
the leverage rate higher and higher and finally caused the financial crisis. I think this is the lesson we have to learn. And this is the structure of China's natural saving rate. I'm not going in detail in this, uh, these figures. If, if anyone is interested, you can print out my uh, presentation. I live in this computer. And this is the personal saving rate of China and the United States. You can see the big, difference, the big differences between China's saving rate and the United States. And, uh, <coughs> so the second issue is domestic versus foreign demand. Uh, rapid increase of China's foreign trade uh, is, is uh, remarkable. And you can see China's foreign trade and surplus, trade surplus, after 2000, the year 2000 is increasing quite a bit. And our surplus in the year 2008, our trade surplus uh, comes to a peak. Uh, <coughs> but uh, if during the financial crisis, there was a big shock of China's economy by reduction of foreign demand. In the year 2009, our GDP growth was 9.2%. Investment in contributed 8.7%. Uh, consumption contributed 4%. And foreign trade contributed minus 3.5%. So that means it was really a big shock of, to China's economy. And on the other hand, the deleverage of developed countries during the financial crisis caused the capacity of China. So China should change its development pattern to re rely more on domestic consumption. But it's not an easy job. Why? Because we need to raise people's purchasing power. It's a must. Otherwise, you cannot rely more on domestic consumption. So we need to raise people's purchasing power. That means we need to raise people's income and we need to uh, reduce taxes, personal taxes, and so on. And uh, promoting the uh, <coughs> credit uh, consumption. At this time being, the personal uh, loan in our uh, total loan is only 15%, not six as the Western countries, 60 to 70%. So we need to also to promote credit consumption. 